tragedy strikes. You lose something, maybe you lose someone, something goes wrong. There's something unexpected and it's pulled away every expectation and opportunity that you had. You're going through some sort of, of loss. Something has struck and you couldn't have expected it. I think the natural tendency that you and I have is to want to reason that out and to put the blame somewhere. We want to know why this has happened. Why are we going through what we're going through in our world today with this virus? I mean, when something wrong happens, we want to put the blame somewhere, maybe to something or to someone. And I think oftentimes God gets the blame. Now, if that's you, don't feel bad. Look, we've all been there, but I have a thought as to why God typically will get the blame for things that are unexpected and when we go through tragedy or loss. Because we reason that, okay, God is all powerful. And if God is all powerful, then he could have stopped this. And so what's up with that? I want to try to answer that. And it's probably foolish of me to try to do that in just a few minutes of a video when authors have written hundreds and hundreds of books on this topic, but I'll do my best. Here's the short answer. If God's all powerful, why didn't he stop it? Here's the short answer to that. God is all powerful. And in his power, he created everything and he created us and he created us with a goal in mind. And that was to have right relationship with him, to be in a genuine, authentic relationship with him. Now, in order for that to be genuine and real, he gave us the gift of choice. If he programs us to love him, that's not really love. That's robotics. And so God gave us this opportunity to choose him. Now, anytime you have the opportunity of choice, there's the potential for sin. You and I know this. You have the choice to do good and bad, and sometimes you and I do bad. And so anytime there's an opportunity for choice, there's the potential for sin. And so for God to remove the, the, the tragedy, for God to remove the unexpected circumstances, it's kind of this chain effect, and all these things go with it. God removes the wrong thing. He removes whatever tragedy you're going through, and along with it goes your freedom of choice, and along with that goes authentic, genuine love. And so here's the thing, man. I think when we, when we blame God, it, it only drives us further away from him. And I think that's the enemy's goal. I think the enemy, one of his greatest tricks, the, the devil's greatest tricks is to convince you that it's God's fault. And so don't go to him. He's trying to convince a person who needs help not to go to the one who's all powerful and all knowing and can provide that help. It's like convincing a dehydrated person that water's bad. And so if you find yourself in that position, man, I want to challenge you and encourage you to resist that. God's a big God. He can handle whatever doubts and frustrations you're going through. In fact, I want to share with you something really quick in, in first Peter, and then we'll be done. First Peter chapter five, uh, verse six Peter says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. God's all powerful and he's all knowing in the right time he's going to provide restoration. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He's a big God. You've got frustrations. You've got doubts. You've got anger. God's big enough to handle that. The devil wants to convince you not to go to God. And when, he, when you do that, he's one. Cast all that onto God because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. That's what we're doing right now. We're recognizing this because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that you have a family of believers throughout the world who's undergoing the same kind of sufferings. If the enemy can convince you that whatever tragedy or loss or unexpected circumstances that you're going through, if he can convince you that you're the only one, you isolate and he's one. Guys, no matter what you're going through, somebody else has gone through it or is currently going through it. And the God of all grace, not the God of anger or frustration or meanness or whatever, the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. I love that. Peter says to God be the power. God, we don't understand why this is happening. We don't understand why... We can't graduate the way that we want to this year. We don't understand why spring is not going the way that we wanted it to. God, we don't understand that. But God, you're all powerful. You're all knowing. You're a big God. You're the God of grace. And you've given us choice. So God, you keep the power. I hope that provides some encouragement for you. I hope that challenges your perspective when it comes to loss and tragedy and unexpected circumstances. And I hope that you'll stick with me in a few days as we dive into the second part of this series. I love you guys. And we'll talk to you soon.